This video is going to focus on a virtual whiteboard app for teachers and students primarily, but it could be used by others. And the name of this app is Lenso. At least that's how I pronounce it. Some people pronounce it Lensu, and I understand why, but I like to call it Lenso. So anyway, this app is one of several that are in a category called virtual whiteboard apps. And I want to show you some of the others that are part of this same category. You can see there in the upper right corner of my folder here on my iPad that there's an app called EduCreations. And this used to be by far my favorite of these virtual whiteboard apps. And it, it really was wonderful. You could make all sorts of lessons on here and it was very easy. You could search and bring in pictures into your lessons and it was just a wonderful app. But recently they decided to make it very limited unless you upgrade to Pro. So notice what it says here, you're limited to one saved draft unless you upgrade to Pro. And so I've just been a little bit disappointed in what's available for free through EduCreations. Now having said that, Many times it's worth paying something for a really good app or a program that you use in your classroom. And so check out EduCreations if you don't mind paying for a really good app. And it really is a good app and a good service. Another really excellent app that's out there that does the same kind of thing that, as what I'm going to show you is an app called Explain Everything. And here it is in the App Store, and you can see this one also costs money, $3.99 for the app. And this is one of the highest rated apps in this category, and you can do lots of good things with it. As you can tell, I have not paid the $4 to get this app, but I've heard excellent things about it from lots of educators. So it's worth checking out. But the one that I like to promote and I like to, to show and to teach is an app called Lenso like I said earlier. And this is what the app looks like right here, Lenso Create. And you can just tap on that and it opens up a virtual whiteboard. And that's really the way you should think about this. It's like having a whiteboard in your classroom that you can use to teach your students. And you can also have students use this virtual whiteboard. But using your finger, you can just draw and write on this virtual whiteboard. And so you could use this if you would like to teach your students how to do math problems. Okay, You could teach them how to do long division, for example, and you could explain that on this whiteboard. And really, you could teach just about anything that you normally use your whiteboard or your chalkboard in your classroom to teach. You could use Lenso to do the same kind of thing. Now to show you how this works, I'm going to tap finish in the upper left corner and I'll tap continue and I'm going to start over. So I'm going to tap new recording in the upper left corner and let's say I want to teach my students how to conjugate AR verbs in Spanish in the present tense. Okay, what I would do is I would set up the whiteboard in advance. Okay, this is a traditional way of teaching AR verb conjugation in the present tense in Spanish. I know there's lots of other ways to do it as well, but you can set out a verb ending chart like this. Okay, and I might, I might get this um, set up ahead of time, okay, before I start recording. But notice there in the upper right corner of the app, there is a record button. So once you're ready, you can just tap that record button and then start teaching. So I could tap the button and say, in this video I'm going to show you how to conjugate AR verbs in Spanish. And the way we're going to do that is by using this verb conjugation chart. Okay, I'm going to tap stop on that recording and continue to teach you how to use this app. So as you can see, it recorded my voice when I tapped that record button. But guess what else it records? It also records anything that you draw in the app or anything that you add using the app. Now, as you can tell, I have already pretty much filled the screen with what I've written already. What if I need more space in which to, to draw and to explain? Well, notice at the top of the screen, it says one of one and there's some arrows. All I have to do to get more space is tap the arrow at the right and it takes me to a second page. Now notice my recording is still paused. I'm going to tap it again to resume recording 
and I'll start teaching again. So we will be using the verb visitar as our example. Visitar means to visit. I'm going to pause that again. So my point here is that with Lenso, you can use these slides basically to lay out the content that you're going to teach and then press record and you can pause it if you need to and resume but then you can jump back and forth to teach this content to your students. Okay, so now that I've got Visitar set up, I could resume. Let's go back and look at the chart and use it with Visitar, which means to visit. The first thing you need to do if you're going to conjugate an AR verb in the, Sp in the Spanish language in the present tense is you need to drop the AR. So the verb Visitar just becomes Visit. Now, if you're talking about yourself and you want to say, I visit, you would add the ending of O. So it would become visito. I'm going to pause that again. And to be honest, I'm not doing a great job of teaching how to conjugate visitar in Spanish. I must be a little rusty. But you get the idea that you can explain whatever it is that you teach. And you can draw it out on the screen. And you can have multiple pages that you can use to do that and it can all be recorded so that the students can play it back and watch it later. Now in addition to just being able to draw and being able to speak and have it be recorded, notice that there's some other tools that you have on the screen in the app. In the lower left corner you have what looks like a roller uh, paintbrush and you can tap on that and it gives you backgrounds for your recordings. So you can have you know lined paper, you can have graph paper for math projects and graphing and things. You can have it be on a, a green board, a, bl a blackboard, a chalkboard. Uh, there's a traditional blackboard, okay? And you can also just choose a color of your choice, okay, to be your background. I kind of like this green board, so I'm going to stick with that. Next to the background paintbrush, the roller paintbrush, you have the pen. And when you tap that, you can change the color of your pen, okay? You can also get a custom color by tapping and selecting a shade of one of the other colors, okay? So that's a useful tool. We also have the eraser. And when you tap the eraser, first of all, it gives you the ability to decide how big the eraser should be, okay? Do you want to just be able to erase a little bit at a time, or do you want to be able to erase a lot at a time? So it's up to you. To decide how big that eraser is. You can also clear all drawings. If you tap that, clear all drawings, it says, are you sure? And if you say yes, continue, it will get rid of all the drawings. You can also clear your images, and I haven't showed you images yet, but that is how you would do it. Now, sometimes people prefer not to hand draw words on the screen. It can be kind of hard for some people uh, to draw out the verb visito or, uh, you know, to write on the iPad using their finger. So if you prefer just to type, you can tap that T in the lower left corner and then tap on the screen and then you can type what you want to appear there. Now um, for me, in most cases, honestly, I prefer just uh, writing with my fingers um, because it's an iPad. I mean it's tactile and it's right there in front of me. Um, I prefer just to scribble it out using my finger. but. If you do want to use the keyboard, you can do that. At the bottom center of Lenso, you have a back arrow, and that is undo, is what that is. So undo, undo, you can keep tapping that if you'd like. You can also redo. And then in the lower right, we have a series of tools that you can use. By default, you have the finger tool, and this is used to select options and to do other important selections. But if you want to, you can switch from the finger tool to the image tool. And notice what this does. When you tap on image, it gives you the ability to tap into some images. You can tap camera to draw in pictures from your camera. You can tap photo album to draw images from there. If you tap into your iCloud, you can pull images from iCloud, from Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive. And then more, where it says more, if you tap, 
there. That gives you the options for how to tap in to some of these other tools and you can manage what those are. And so any image that you can get onto your iPad or that you can take a picture of with your camera or that you can put in Dropbox, OneDrive or Google Drive or iCloud, you know, any image like that you can grab and you can pull in to your Lenso project. Okay, once that image is there, you can just use two fingers to pinch it to make it smaller or bigger. You can also use two fingers to rotate it. And uh, it's just, it's a really good, useful way to add some images to your lessons that you create in Lenso. Now, again, notice that the recording tool is paused. And so you could spend some time adding images the way you want them to be and then just resume by tapping the record button in the upper right corner. Looking again at the bottom of the screen, we have a couple of additional tools in addition to the finger tool for selecting and the um, images tool. We have a triangle there at the bottom. If you tap that, it gives you some basic shapes and some more complicated shapes that you can tap to bring into your uh, Lenso lessons. Okay, I'm gonna add a circle. Once you bring those in, if you tap on them, notice at the bottom of the app, it gives you the ability to change the color. So the fill color, I could change, okay? I could change the stroke color. You can also reset it and you can also delete it. So that's a pretty good option to be able to add in those shapes. Now, there are many other shapes that you can get if you upgrade to their pro version of Lenso, but this free version has many shapes that are quite useful, or you can draw the shapes yourself if you really need a different shape. In the lower right corner, we also have a PDF button, and you can basically bring in PDFs that will become part of your Lenso lessons, and you just put them in one of these accounts, iCloud, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and you can set those up if you need to using the More button. So. This is really, I think, a wonderful tool that we and our students can use to create lessons. Now, when you're done with a lesson, and remember that you can use that arrow at the top of the screen to create several pages worth of lessons. And the only limitation that I'm aware of with Lenso is the fact that you're limited to 15 minute lessons or less. Okay, so I can make a 15 minute lesson, I can make 10 of them, I could make 20 of them, as long as they're 15 minutes or less. And of course, if you really need to make a 30 minute lesson, just make two, just make part one and part two. The students can watch those uh, one right after the other and they'll have their 30 minute lesson. So I'm gonna tap finish in the upper left corner and notice that I didn't sign into an account to do this. I didn't really do anything other than just open the app and start working. But at this point, I either have to discard the recording or I have to save it. So I'm gonna tap Save Recording. I'm going to give it a title and you can give it a description if you'd like and then just tap Save. Now this lesson has been saved just to my iPad. No one else can see this, it's just on my iPad. But really that's not very useful to me to create a lesson that's just on my iPad. It would be nice if I could upload this to the internet and have my students and maybe their parents be able to watch it if they need to. Fortunately, there is an option for that. I can tap in the upper right corner on that gear. If I tap on it, it opens up and it says Lenso account. You can tap on Lenso account. There's login and you can tap login. It might take a couple of seconds to load. But at this screen here, you can sign in to your Lenso account. Now, if you don't already have an account, which I would expect most of you probably don't have a Lenso account, what you can do is go down to the bottom of the screen and it says, don't have an account yet? Sign up now. And you can tap that button and start the process of signing up for Lenso. And your recording that you've made will be saved into this new account. Now I'm gonna back up and here on this screen, I do have an account so I can just sign into that account. But notice you can also log in with Facebook. If this iPad is already logged into Facebook, just tapping that button will get me signed in to Lenso using my Facebook account or same with Google, okay? But instead, I'm going to sign in to my regular Lenso account. And 
Now that I'm signed in, it sees a presentation that I've already done that has been uploaded into my uh, account. And next to it is the conjugating AR verbs presentation that I made just a few minutes ago. Now notice in the upper right corner of that conjugating AR verbs video, there is a share button. That's the square with, with an arrow coming out through the top. If I tap on that, notice that it lets me choose some options. I can have this be a public Lenso, or I can make it be unlisted so that only I really have a link to it. I'm going to have it be public. I can choose my category. Okay, this is going to be not specified in this case. And then I'll tap publish in the upper right corner. And it is sending this video and this tutorial that I just made up into the cloud into my Lenso account. So at this point in this video, I'm going to switch views and show you the Lenso website. So this is Lenso.com or Lensu.com if you prefer. And here you can see that they have two main products, Lenso Cloud and Lenso Create. And I'm going to click on the Create version of it. And it takes me to this screen where it encourages people to use it, whether it be on Google, Android devices, or on Apple devices. But here in the upper right corner, there is a login. And if you click login on the website, you can put in that same email and password that you used earlier. And you can see, once I'm signed in, that here on my dashboard, I have some recordings. This is one that I did a while ago. And then this is the recording, the tutorial, the video that I made just a few minutes ago with you watching. And I can click on this to open it up, and I could either watch this myself or show it to my students uh, right here from my account. I'm going to advance through it so that you can see that every step of my video has been captured and my voice has been captured as well. Now in addition to playing these, showing them to your students and things like that, notice that underneath the videos there are some share options. You can share it on Facebook, you can tweet it on Twitter, you can use Google Plus, but there's also this button here that says Get Embed Code. And if you click that and copy the code that appears, you could put your video on a website. And there are lots of website builders out there. One that is really excellent is called Weebly. And Weebly is a tool that, like I say, makes it really easy to make your own website. But this is just one of many that are out there. Here in Weebly, I can click on this widget that says Embed Code, and I can drag it onto the screen, and then click to set custom HTML, and then I just paste in the code that I got from the Lenso website. And then in Weebly, you have to click outside of this box to make it actually work. So I'm going to click outside the box, and it's loading up my lesson. There it is. And then if I click Publish, and click this link here, it will take me to my live website on Weebly and notice that it loads in my Lenso lesson so that my students could go right to this web page and they could just watch the video right there instead of having to click a link and going to Lenso.com. Now for those of you that use Canvas, it's also possible to embed these Lenso lessons into Canvas. So I want to show this. I'll just click on one of my Canvas courses and I'm going to go to a page. It, it could be an assignment page, it could be a discussion page, whatever it might be. And then I can just click here where it says HTML editor and I just clicked and then hit enter a few times to get a free part of the uh, editor and then I'll just paste in the code and then click save. And as you can see my Lenso lesson is being pulled directly into Canvas. It's being embedded there. Students could go to my Canvas page, click play, and they could watch and learn from my lesson. So Lenso is really kind of an obscure app. Very few people know about Lenso at this point in time, but uh, more, more people have heard of EduCreations or Explain Everything, but I really love Lenso and I think it's, it's really one of the best options that's out there because it is free. The free version of it is amazing, but if you do want to pay, you can get even better features and tools. So. I hope you'll enjoy trying out Lenso, or if you'd like to pay, go for EduCreations or Explain Everything.